Resident Florida man here. I finally broke into the Prusa factory to fulfill some of your all's greatest dreams and the things that some of you love to hate. We're here at Prusa Research. We're going to be sneaking around and see what kind of trouble we can get into. <laughs> We are here at the SMT assembly line for Prusa Research, and I'm like a kid in a candy store over here. Everything from custom screen printing for all of the solder masks that are required for the PCB, to inspection for that screen printing, from one machine that does 30,000 parts per hour, to a second machine that does 30,000 parts per hour, to two more machines that could do 30,000 parts an hour, but they do really big components. Prusa did this mainly because it kind of sucks when you have to outsource to other companies. You have to trust they know what they're doing, that they have good quality inspection. And when you can bring it all in house, it obviously makes things way easier for not only control, traceability, but also if you want to develop something fast, you don't have to send it out and get it ordered from somebody. You can literally build it right here. So in these machines right now is the XLX Buddy board, which is the main control board for the Prusa XL. And it's going through the stages down the line, but it is a double-sided PCB. So they actually have to flip it over. They store hundreds of thousands, if not millions of components here, and they're all on reels. The machine will grab them up. Now you might say, Grant, that doesn't look like there's anything on the reels, that's the point because the parts are so freaking tiny. This facility is a maker's paradise because electronics are just part of the process in making a Prusa 3D printer. Doing your own boards in-house is something that very few companies out there do, and it ensures quality, consistency, and you can also hide really funny things in the PCBs as well. So from screen printing, to placing and all the way down at the end, reflow. Then there's inspection, there's PCB routing, and they have a really cool X-ray machine. But this is just a small portion of the process that it takes to build a Prusa 3D printer. So let's go see what else is required to make things that are made here work everywhere else. Come on. Part of the process of building a Prusa 3D printer is testing. We are here in one of the testing labs at Prusa Research where, yeah, it looks like they do have a fair bit of fun, but the fun is actually work. These printers go through rigorous testing and in fact, back through those doors, we have machines that have been printing since 2008 that are still printing to this day. And here, we have the guy that runs the whole show. Hi, my name is Indrich and yes, I'm the head of the testing department in here. So you guys primarily deal with making sure that the machines that end up going out have been almost abused in there. You guys are running these machines all the time to make sure that even in a farm environment, like what we do at 3D Musketeers, these machines are going to last. And if there are problems, you can identify them early before we find them. Yeah, so that's, that's, why, I, that's why we are here and mm -hmm. uh, the machines are uh, quite a beat up <laughs> from the produce. Our mission in here is uh, no issues should uh, leave the building or they should be at least uh, no one about. Yeah. And then there's the decision if it's a critical issue or uh, if it's uh, uh, some uh, shifted pixels which uh, would be unfortunate if they were to block the release of, of the firmware per se. Right, right. And especially if it's got some uh, really useful uh, new features which people are waiting for or can help them a lot. So you guys actually handle a lot of the testing before things go out to the general public then? Yes. So you're the ones finding all the bugs before we find them? Uh, ho hopefully, and uh, be glad you don't find uh, the <laughs> most major bugs uh, we do find in here. <laughs> all right, I gotta ask, what's the craziest bug that you found? Well, uh, let's say years ago when we were uh, about to release a mini, we found out that uh, uh, would you look at that, uh, if you are uh, in the wizard, uh, if you just start the wizard of the mini and you leave the machine or the uh, motors heat up to uh, like 180 degrees. <laughs> That's a little spicy for a stepper motor. That would kill the stepper motor, wouldn't uh, it? Yeah, it was, it was uh, I, I believe it, it was uh, at least borderline. It was... That would melt the plastic. Uh, it did it. it. <laughs> <laughs> See, 
That's the value of having a testing facility. The value of making sure that it's not gonna go to 180C on its own is really important. But at the same time, you guys are also doing Oh, a little bit of work to make sure that everything is fully polished before it goes out the door. Exactly, and it's uh, both uh, the, pro uh, the products being developed mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the products being maintained, uh, which means uh, when the product is being developed, uh, we are getting the iterations we are reporting both to the firmware guys and the hardware guys. Uh, this isn't working, this, this bearings will uh, uh, just st stop working uh, with, with this clip uh, after a couple of days and if this feature doesn't work because it does uh, this and that. What is your favorite thing about what you do here? I suppose the vari variability of the work. You mm -hmm. will pretty much never know what you will do next because the, the priorities uh, can shift quite a lot. Yeah. I can uh, come to one of my guys uh, three times a day and uh, tell him to, this is uh, your priority for this morning and uh, actually uh, around lunch, uh, sorry, this needs to be done first and mm -hmm. well, actually uh, this is got uh, the top priority now. Yes, the, uh, you could say the work is uh, still the same, we are still testing the machines, the same firmware, the same features, but on the other hand, the, the issues are still new and plenty <laughs> Right. before uh, we also get them back to the developers. Right. So I'd say the viral bit of the work. That's always good. The stuff that you guys are doing here, does that include some of like the alpha things that we can get from GitHub or is this pre-alpha? Uh, well, we tend to get the rawest, rawest versions of, of the features and firmware. So the firmware testing itself could be split in, into again two, mm -hmm. uh, two parts, the feature tests mm -hmm. and the big tests as we call them. Okay. The feature test is, uh, we have a new feature, we have, uh, let's say, auto-dim auto of the screen on the printer. Right. So uh, we, have to, we have to get really deep into it and uh, will the settings work? Uh, uh, does it actually, does it, uh, does it do what it uh, has to do? Mm -hmm. Are there some uh, edge cases when it doesn't work? Can it, can it happen so that the, the uh, screen dims forever, let's say? And if it does, uh, we have to find, uh, we have to try at least to find a way how to yep. uh, do it. So let's say, uh, if, if you, if you are remove the USB drive, while the screen is dimming, then uh, it will just lock itself forever. So, uh, I'm, I'm making all this up, it's just, uh, just the type of the work we are trying to do when we are doing the feature tests. Those little edge cases yes. that might happen once or twice, but will set the entire Twitter community off exactly. because all exactly. oh, this one thing happened. Yeah. That's kind of what you guys do. You guys try to find those edge cases. Exactly. That's awesome. And uh, well, uh, two things help us uh, with that. And so uh, first of all, sitting at the desk and just uh, torturing the machine. And then also uh, our uh, testing uh, print farm, mm -hmm. when uh, we are running prints uh, pretty much non-stop, uh, as I would uh, paraphrase a certain book, uh, Filament Must Flow. Because that's, uh, as we are printing pretty much uh, anything, as the people are printing pretty much anything, we can easily find uh, these cases and, uh, uh, rather than if we were just stuck printing benches. Right. Benches are somewhat useful, but they get very boring after a while. Making a giant Tyrannosaurus skull, now mm -hmm. that's, that's a lot of fun. And it's actually also a test. It was uh, when uh, the packs were introduced into slicer cutting. Right. So it's uh, it's uh, it's it's not that all that visible, but it's all together by packs and the dovetails. Yeah, you can see the dovetail in here. It was one of the first dovetail cuts in here. <laughs> all right. This does sound like a lot of fun. <laughs> you guys do have a lot of fun here. Well, we're gonna uh, we're gonna sneak back there and take a look at what's going on. Sure. Go Thank ahead. you very much for for letting us kind of poke around and see some of the really awesome stuff. This is all Galaxy Black? It is, it is. Actually, wow. Galaxy Black is the most common filament I have in here. How many kilos was this? I didn't rate it, but I'd say it could be like 20, 30. Oh, it's, uh, I, uh, I was also testing the lighting in there. Mm -hmm. We didn't fare well for this uh, type of uh, thing you need to assemble because it tends to uh, wobble, but uh, it's uh, got its uh, different uses, the lighting yep. in film. I mean. Ultimately, people are going to make stuff like this. So. They might uh, as well. So. Oh, we... Somebody can better test it first before they get it. The trick with Prusa that many other companies don't do is you guys actually get solutions out fast. You have a problem, you find it, you get a solution, and it goes out to the public. And that is amazing. We are hard on the printers and even harder on the developers. Oh man, <laughs> I've seen how hard you are on the printers. Do we get to see the developers or, or, or are, they, are they hidden off somewhere? Yeah, they are in the barn. Okay, that makes sense. Well, awesome. We're gonna go take a look in the back. Thank you so much for showing us around. Go ahead. This has been awesome, seriously. Nice meeting you. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, stay tuned. We have so much more here at Prusa coming at you right after this. We are here in the testing facility that has a lot of printers. Like I, I'm actually taking some notes as how they store their filament and everything like that because, well, 
these guys are doing it for real here. From models all over the place, from creators that you might know, to test printers that we might have to blur. This facility is where the rubber meets the road in making sure that the machines that end up in your all's hands work as well as you might expect. This is where they abuse the machines, they find bugs, they patch them, and then they test to make sure that those patches actually work. And that way you don't have to do it and you hopefully leave support alone. <laughs> every now and then. But hey, if you need the help, push support is available. We have everything in here from test prints for input shaping. This is actually the test print they use for input shaping. This one is specifically for the Mark IV for the different values so that they can see what works and what doesn't. Being able to utilize tests like that is phenomenal and a great way to ensure that what ships actually works. That's the big thing here. The last thing you guys want to do is get a printer and then have it be not functional for a certain amount of time until you actually get the right parts, get the right firmware, whatever it might be. Or, you know, have a machine that you can't update firmware on. Anyways, this lab is truly amazing. And this is not the print farm. We still have to go to the print farm. I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. But seriously, there's so much more to see here. So let's go on to the next area. Come on. It would not be a trip to Prusa Research without visiting the print farm. Almost 600 machines running around the clock to prove that 3D printing can actually be a viable source of end use manufacturing. Love it or hate it, Prusa Research uses a ton of 3D printed parts in their own machines and to prove how good their machines are, they use their own machines in production. Everything from Mark IVs over here to Mark III S plus, who knows? But these machines all have very subtle changes from the regular machines that you guys might have at home. And a lot of that's because there's 600 of them in this room. It is like Florida in here and it is snowing outside right now. Each machine drawing 100 watts or more is gonna produce a lot of heat. And so around you might see some ducts up top and there are ducts all around the machines as well to help remove some of that hot air so that the room doesn't become a venerable swamp. But there's also some things that we've noticed on the machines like little test coupons that are used when the machines go into service because they service the machines here on this farm once every 1,000 hours. So don't feel bad if you haven't maintained your machines ever because you might not have had 1,000 hours on it. But if you have had 1,000 hours, um, it might be time. It's really cool to be here. It's, it's like a kid in a candy store, if you will. A dream to be standing amongst the machines that built a lot of the printers that I have that you might have or maybe you're looking at getting. And honestly, it's pretty darn cool. This is the thing that everybody wants to see and it's the, the image, you know, oh, I'm in the print farm. But to me, it's all the little subtle things that make this space different. Like the machines here, they have ASA PC PCF on them. The screen cover is a completely different color so that you know that these machines are designed for hardened materials. The actual printed parts themselves are able to withstand higher temperatures and they're fully enclosed so that the heat stays where it needs to stay. That kind of thing is really valuable in a print farm atmosphere because, well, there were a lot of people behind me, <laughs> they've all gone away, but there are a lot of people working here and you don't need to have people coming up asking me, hey, what's on this machine? Hey, what's on this machine? Hey, what's on this machine? Makes it really easy for you to figure out what is printing, what material and where at a glance, which is super cool. On the Mark III, some of the little things they've added, they've added blower fans to the extruder motor because it gets so hot in here that it can actually cause heat creep problems. And we've got little test coupons. They're on the front of every machine. And that tells you when it was last serviced and you can actually see a test sample. But something that is kind of interesting to me, and those of you that like to change your nozzle often might enjoy this, on every one of the SD cards, or even on the Mark IVs, on the flash drives themselves, is a color code, as well as on the SD cards, a number. 
that tells you the size of the nozzle. Those of you that have multiple printers, you might have one that runs a 0.6, maybe one that runs a 0.8, and maybe a couple of them that run 0.4s. But you have to remember what is what. And I've definitely never put a 0.4 print into a 0.6 nozzle. I've, I've never done that. And I'm sure none of you have either, but this makes sure that that never happens. That kind of stuff is so cool to me. This space is proof, real proof, that you can actually use 3D printing in a production atmosphere. Not only is Prusa building a printer that is gonna last, but at the same time, they believe so much in their own equipment that they use their own equipment to make their own equipment. But that begs the question, and let me know what you guys think in the comments about this one. What came first? The Prusa parts or the Prusa printer? I would love to know what you guys would print if you had access to a farm this big. You could make thousands of parts per hour without a single problem whatsoever. It is insane how fast you can produce parts with almost 600 machines. And even further, they're using their own filament that is produced right below us. And while unfortunately we can't film in there because there's a lot of secret sauce that goes on for those machines, it's really cool to see it in action up here in a massive, massive scale. I could stand here all day and just watch the machines go. It is therapeutic, if you will. And those of you that have watched your printers move, you know what I'm saying. If you had access to a farm like this, let me know in the comments what you would print on something like this. We are not done yet, but this video is. So stay tuned, because we have more coverage of Prusa Research coming at you. And I want to give a huge thank you to all of our supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you for making this trip possible. And also thank you to Printed Solid, because they did sponsor our trip to Smurf. We are here right before Smurf, hence why I still have hair. And we put some of that money into coming here, because how can you not? It's amazing. So thank you to everyone that has made trips like these possible. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to film in the freaking print farm. But that is all I have for you guys today. Make sure to leave a like and get subscribed if you haven't, because there's more coverage of Prusa coming at you really soon. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. We have places to go. Come on.